Hey guys, Bobby Hughes here with Heritage Pride Custom Firearms and I uh, just want to bring you guys an update video on uh, the, the, the status of our, our homestead that we're working on here and um, it's been about uh, three, three or four weeks I guess since the last uh, video I did uh, on uh, uh, our journey to our homestead uh, 1.0 or chapter 1 and um, made a little bit of progress, not a whole heck of a lot. Uh, I've had a couple of jobs come up that um, needed to be done right away or uh, I wasn't going to get them. So I've uh, been working on that. Still got that in the, in the process of finishing those up and, uh, and I, you know, just taking my time to do estimates and stuff like that. Everything takes time away from me finishing the house. But um, it's a huge priority because right now we're paying a house payment and we're also paying rent uh, where we're staying right now. So um, need to get it done and get, get in gear with it. Today what I want to talk to you about is plumbing. Um, and you know, you guys know, my followers know that my videos, they're not specifically based around uh, do-it-yourself home improvements. But because that's my job, I do um, construction and, and stuff like that. It, it only makes sense for me to portray those things on my channel because that's me and that's what my channel is about is about me and this is our homestead we're doing it ourselves and it's to encourage you to do stuff yourself so my videos uh, my do-it-yourself videos aren't necessarily going to be a how-to more just an overview of the, the, of the systems that I use and things like that so in this video what I want to talk to you about is specifically plumbing and um, uh, we'll talk a little bit about sweating pipe and uh, using copper, the different types of pipe, things like that, and then the PEX system. Uh, PEX, P-E-X, is uh, it's not new, it's been out for years, but it's kind of the new uh, modern way of doing plumbing. Um, it's very easy, it's very do-it-yourself friendly, and you can it's a lot cheaper than most. Um, and by the time you buy all the fittings and stuff for PVC, it works out to be about the same price as PVC is. So um, it's, a, it's a very affordable way to do uh, your own plumbing and do-it-yourself stuff, repairs and things of that nature. I'm going to show you my whole plumbing setup here in just a second. Um, but uh, I shot some video uh, uh, probably uh, two weeks ago of how to sweat pipe. And uh, I'm going to piece that in right now just to show you, just give you a, a quick and easy way to sweat pipe. And then when I come back, I'll, uh, I'll show you. The what we're doing right now is, is I'm sweating um, this little nipple here into this uh, brass shutoff fitting. And then I'm going to convert to a three quarter inch PEX um, fitting, a brass PEX fitting after that. And then that'll, that'll tie back into our PEX system. So what you want to do is for your pipe, you want to get some cloth back abrasive and you just want to clean it up a little bit make sure that it's good and smooth and uh, clean wear gloves so the oils from your skin don't get on the on the pipe that'll mess with the sweat and then on your other fittings you're just going to want to use a little brush and brush them out all right once you get them all cleaned up then you're going to want to use some flux uh, and what flux does is it allows it to um, kind of keep the the dirtiness of the the heat like propane is dirty so it allows it to stay clean while you sweat it it makes a nice smooth um, uh, sweat and you want to sweat because what happens is when it sweats it actually sucks that solder down in the fitting and it'll create a bond and seal that entire surface area and so the flux allows that to happen better so what you want to do is take your flux and make sure that your flux is clean you don't want to use dirty flux Put your flux in here, and we'll also flux the nipple as well. Just flux the heck out of it. it ain't gonna hurt nothing. And then we'll just take and put our two fittings together, just like that. And that's all you have to do. Now, what? I, now, when you sweat two pieces that are really close together like this, you want to go ahead and. Um, put both of them together and we're going to sweat both of them pretty much simultaneously. All right. And I've already put flux in this one. So anyway, we'll take and push the flux down on there or push that fitting down. 
Now I'm ready to sweat these two joints right here. So let's go sweat. All right, now there's several types of, well, there's not several types. There's two main types of gas that you would use to sweat with um, or to brace. And that would be propane. Um, I've got a propane torch laying around here somewhere. And then there's also map gas. All right, propane burns uh, cooler. I don't know all the temperatures and the degreeage and everything. Like I said, I'm not a, not a professional. Um, I don't know all the terminology uh, and, the, and the details, the, the uh, specifications on it. But propane burns dirty and it also burns uh, damp. It's a, uh, I, don't, I don't know how to explain it, but it'll leave like a, a condensation until it starts to get to a certain temperature. And it usually takes a while to heat up, especially when you're doing a big brass fitting like this shutoff valve here, or three quarter inch pipe, it'll take a long time. Now map gas, map gas is more expensive. Um, a cylinder of map gas, it just depends on where you're at, but is about four times the, uh, the cost of propane. But, excuse me, the amount that you use will be a lot less. This burns a lot hotter, it's a lot cleaner, and it'll heat up a lot faster than map gas or than propane will. So I use that to sweat with, and then I use propane sometimes, uh, depending on what's on the truck. Um, also, you want your uh, solder. Uh, this is a sterling premium lead-free uh, solder. It's specifically made for uh, your water system. You don't want to use something with lead in it. All right, so it's it's fairly simple uh, to sweat. We're just going to heat the pipe up. And uh, you want to try to heat it up pretty evenly, the best you can. And then we're just going to touch the, uh, you'll see the flux melt away. We're going to touch the, the solder to it and it'll suck it down in there. It doesn't take much solder. Um, you'll you'll get the feel of it once you once you feel it flow. You noticed how I touched it a little bit on the back side to see if it was starting to flow yet, and it wasn't. But once it starts to flow, you'll see it kind of pull in ahead of you, and that means it's getting a good suction down in that fitting in that joint. Now, one thing that you also want to do whenever you sweat is clean up your joints. You don't want it to look dirty, so we let it cool for just a second. And then we're going to take a rag. Now you want to be careful not to get this stuff on you because it will flick back on you if it's not um, dried up all the way. But we want to clean this joint up and clean all that gunk off of there um, before we sweat our next joint there. Alright, so now I'll flip it over like this and I'll probably have to do hold it with, this, with these uh, channel locks. Um, while I do it to make sure that it doesn't fall over. So I'll just hold it right up here on this fitting. Okay, so uh, now that you know how to sweat pipe, I'm going to show you right here. This is where we used those connections that I was making uh, during that sweating section, uh, sweating pipe. That's all the copper that's inside of this closet, other than. Um, right down here that's my end that's my main line coming in um, the main actually comes from that direction uh, down at the road and then it comes in underneath the house right over there on that end and then it sticks up and then it turns and it comes all the way over here and then pops up in this closet right here um, now just to give you an idea of how normal plumbing works 
um, not PEC system, but just regular plumbing, it's usually daisy chain. So if your main comes in there, then typically in that area somewhere, if you had a basement, would be your hot water heater. So your cold comes in, it branches off, it hits your hot water heater, it comes back up, and then you've got two lines that feed, excuse me, that feed the whole house. So you'll have a hot and cold that comes up over here, and then it'll go over here, you know, poke up for your washer and dryer, and then it continues on over here and into the bathroom, and then you've got all the fixtures in the bathroom. And that's typically how your plumbing works. The problem with that is that when you, um, when let's say you're in here taking a shower, and we all know the story, you're taking a hot shower, somebody flushes the toilet, or starts a load of laundry over in the laundry closet, your water pressure diminishes and you lose your water temperature. You can't maintain a water temperature. So you adjust fire and then when the water quits running, the temperature goes way up and you scorch yourself. So anyway, the PEG system kind of um, removes that from the equation. Your main water comes in and then it is dispensed to each individual fixture. So each fixture has its own set of lines. Um, like I said, this is a very affordable system. The most expensive part is, is the manifold. And you don't have to use a manifold. You can use PEX in the daisy chain system, just like I explained. But um, it defeats the purpose. The whole point of the PEX system is to have a manifold. And what the manifold does is it helps maintain pressure and temperature. So you get an even feed to everything. So if somebody is using the washer and dryer, which is the bottom here, the hot and cold, and uh, you're in the shower, which is one of these other ones, I can't remember, um, then the manifold evenly distributes the water and it maintains the temperature through the, the settings. So that's what the, the idea in the PEX, in the manifold system is. But you can see it's very neat, and I like it because it's centralized and I can isolate specific fixtures if I want to. So if I want to turn off everything but, well, say the kitchen sink, then I can do so with these little shutoff valves here. So it's a really neat system. Just to give you an idea of my setup here, just so you can see, the main comes in down there, it comes up, and then we go into a whole home water filtration system, which the filter is setting up there on top right now, um, mainly just because I've been flushing the system and I don't want to get my filter dirty while I'm flushing the system. Then it comes out, those are those fittings that we sweat, comes over, and then this one right here drops down and feeds the hot water heater, which I don't have any water in the water heater yet. Um, I just got the water heater all hooked up today. Feeds the water heater, comes back out, and comes out and goes into the man the hot goes into the manifold here. So, and then your cold continues on and feeds the manifold here. So um, that's you know pretty much how the PEX manifold system works. It just everything feeds into it and then uh, feeds out. And then I've got, of course, you've got your uh, pressure relief valve and we plumb that in. Um, now one thing I've done, a lot of people will put a drain in the floor and then just kind of do their runoffs and everything. Well, I don't want the possibility of water getting into my house. Um, now granted, you always have the possibility of, of this whole manifold exploding or a leak or something like that. But if this pressure relief valve blows, I don't want water getting into the floor or on the floor. So what happens is it'll it'll come out the pipe. Now a lot of people will plumb it, but they'll just plumb it to an open hole. And then it comes across, I've got a check valve here. And the reason for the check valve is so that when you flush the system, this right here, this shut off here, allows you to flush the system. So, or let's say you turn the water off, you want to work on something, you would crack this open and it allows all the water to drain out of the system. All right, Or, like I said, you can flush the system, which if you're doing a lot of plumbing repairs or something, you'll want to flush the system before you send anything to your uh, fixtures. So that's the flush, and it goes down, and then it ties into my main house drain down there. Um, and then obviously, we pick up the water heater pan here. So if there's any, any problems with the water heater in the future, then the water will drain out as well into the house. So, or into the drain, I'm sorry. It'll, it'll just catch right there and run right into the main drain. So that way if there's any issues um, with the system, 
then uh, this pan will catch the majority. If there was a big blowout in here, this pan would catch a lot of the water too, which would help and, and help flush it out too. So, uh, or help it hit the uh, run out to the drain. So anyway, the check valve is to keep the water from the flush system from running back up into this tube and setting. So it just allows the water to run one way. Okay. So anyway, you might say, well, Bobby, this doesn't have anything to do with homesteading or prepping. Well, I think that it does in a way. Like I said, this is me. This is, this is the kind of stuff I do, the work that I do. So I wanted to introduce it to my channel in a way. And then also talk about how it does uh, come into homesteading and prepping. Um, you know, we always look for ways to save money. And the best way to save money is to be uh, conscious of where we're, where, um, what we're spending our money on. Now, in this situation, in this circ in this scenario, I don't have a well. I'm fed by city water, so I have to pay a water bill every month. So I want to conserve as much water as I can. And with the, by using the PEC system, it allows me to help maintain water temperature so I'm not flooding the system with uh, flushing the system of its all its cold water that's sitting in the hot water lines. It, it really cuts back on the amount of cold water that sets in the lines, things like that. So it helps you uh, conserve uh, the amount of water that you use. Okay, And then also, um, we can say that this right here is prepping. Uh, we're preparing for uh, you know a water heater to go bad or something in the future, and this allows you to keep uh, damages to a minimum. So uh, just a neat little setup. I like to watch YouTube videos and see how other people set you know set up stuff, um, whether it be plumbing or gun rooms or you know whatever it might be. So this just to give you an idea of how my setup is hooked up and runs. So anyway, that is my plumbing. Um, for the most part, there's, that's about it. It's not too fancy, but it's uh, very well. I like to keep everything organized and uh, decent and in order, and this is a good way to do so. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for this video. I did, like I said, just wanted to do an update. Uh, got some of the sheetrock done. We got the plumbing done. Um, you know, all the plumbing, uh, the main plumbing is finished now. Um, so we have uh, water and uh, we have heat also. Uh, I didn't mention that, but I got all my duct work in. I uh, got the gas turned on, the heat's running. As a matter of fact, I got the heat running right now at 64. Um, also, since last video, we got the attic insulated uh, with a uh, green fiber recycled insulation. Um, and I chose it because of its insulation value um, per, square, per cubic inch or per cubic foot. Um, and also the fact that it's recycled, that's a neat thing. And it's made out of recycled newspapers and cardboard, um, so that's cool. It doesn't itch. There's no there's no fiberglass in it, so there's no itch, and uh, it's very affordable. Um, you can buy a, a pack. I don't know how many cubic feet that it's supposed to do, um, but it's ten dollars for the for one pack. Um, and uh, anyway, I think we used uh, thirteen, and I've got an insulation value of about. Um, about R23 probably um, is my insulation value, so that's pretty thick. I mean, that's a that's a pretty thick insulation layer in this house. Um, so roughly, it cost me about 150 bucks to insulate the whole house, or, or the the ceiling, I should say. So you know, if that's a, another way to conserve energy is to uh, add to your insulation. So if you find that in the winter um, you're losing a lot of heat, or during the summer you're um, losing a lot of air conditioning, you know, it feels like it's running a lot. It could be several different things. It could be floor insulation, it could be walls, it could be windows and doors, draftiness, um, but it can also uh, be as simple as, as your attic, um, insulation that's in your attic. So maybe an idea is to add some insulation to that and uh, it won't cost you as much. But like I said, I did this whole house for about 150, or the whole ceiling uh, for about $150 and uh, it keeps warm in here, um, which granted I've got a lot of windows in this house so that helps. Um, that was all part of the plan too, uh, was to have lots of natural light to save on energy and also, uh, or to save on lighting, and uh, we also will get that good heat transfer uh, from the low E um, windows that are installed as well. So in the, in the winter it allows 
solar heat to radiate through, and in the summer it keeps the, the heat out from the from the uh, from the sun. So it's really cool there. Anyway, we've got the heat and air working. Um, so uh, like I said, it, it's maintaining good. I'm happy with that. Um, I've been leaving the uh, the heat on when I'm here working at about 62 to 64, and uh, it'll run and maintain. If I don't open a door, it'll set for an hour before it kicks back on again, hour, hour and a half. So uh, I'm very happy with the insulation in the house and uh, the efficiency so far. So anyway, um, that's just the update uh, so far. Um, the next uh, video, we'll probably talk a little bit about sheetrock because that's about what we're doing. Um, and then uh, I'm also working on, I did a video when I wired up the panel. Uh, I did the first of two videos on how to install a backup generator system at your home or in your homestead. So um, I'm waiting until I get the rest of the house done um, before I hook up the actual generator for the backup system. And that's when I'll do the second part to that video, and I'll post both of those at the same time. So, um, like I said, like I've talked about in the other videos, once we get the house done, then we'll start working out in the uh, in the yard, getting our greenhouse built, shed, start some aquaponics maybe, and uh, raised bed gardening, stuff like that. But i got to get on with it because the summer's going to be here, and it's going to be time to plant, and I ain't going to have the house done yet. So, anyway, guys, um, hope you enjoyed the, uh, the updates. Um, I promise there'll be some good videos coming here soon on guns, um, my gun room when I get, get started on that project. So I've got a lot of irons in the fire. Um, just got to get, you know, priorities uh, are what they are. So we've got to get that done first. Um, I had my first, uh, well, maybe not my first, but one of the first contacts from uh, the uh, Apocalypse Prepper Show. Um, somebody texted me today. Uh, from the local area, I don't know how the heck, you know, they got my number or whatever. Well, I mean, it's not hard, but um, I got a text today from a, a follower, um, well, not a follower, a fellow prepper who uh, watched me on uh, on Apocalypse Preppers, and it's cool to get some support, you know, to get some, a text like that saying that I was inspiring um, and encouraging to see that there's other preppers in the area, so um, that was neat. So, anyway... Uh, that's about it. I don't know why I told you that, but just rambling on, I guess. So, anyway, guys, until the next video, get out there, shoot some guns, be safe, and most importantly, have fun. See you guys later.